because I have tattoos, I cannot enter the masjid because he says that I'm a non-Muslim because I have tattoos. With tattoos, you're maybe a non-Muslim. Like, I can't pray. Like, like that's, that's what it is. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Ali? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to Chat Away in Ummati Station. How is everybody doing? Uh, Hatim, how are you doing today? Yes. Because you were sick um, last night. Yes, I'm feeling much better today. I was under the weather. Yeah. But uh, today, I think, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm much better. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, what are we having today? What are we cooking? We have uh, our special brother. Uh, I think uh, let us in, uh, let us introduce our uh, brother for today, Brother Ishaq. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ishaq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. How are you today? Very good, alhamdulillah. And how is everybody? Great. Good, great. alhamdulillah. We're, we're very happy to see you today. Ah, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, mashallah. <laughs> Me, I'm in Canada right now, so my day is starting. Uh, we have different time zones, so here it's the morning, you it's uh, like 5 p.m. Yeah. So, yes, yes, yes. I'm happy yes, to inshallah. be able to be with you guys today. Oh, th thanks. Yeah, you're, you're, you're from Canada, actually, right? You live in Canada. Yes, I, I'm, I'm from Canada. I live in Canada. I'm in Canada right now. Oh, okay, excellent. International uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I love <laughs> it. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> how's, the, how's the cold in Canada? The cold yesterday was uh, minus thirty-seven degrees. Minus so, thirty-seven. Uh, was pretty cold. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you know, you you know, Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Yesterday it was eighteen here in Oman, and people were freezing. <laughs> eighteen plus. Wow! <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> and 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 it's minus thirty-seven. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, so yeah. how's things on your side, uh, brother Ishaq? How's the life? Uh, and uh, family, friends. My family is well. My everybody is well. Alhamdulillah. The struggle, you know, was always to since I reverted to Islam and I changed my life was to actually find, you know, a good business. To so now, Alhamdulillah, Allah put on my on my uh, on my way a business. So now I'm I'm. I'm selling uh, those cookies to like to the so that's oh. yes. So Mashallah. I find that and it's a uh, butter cookies and mm -hmm. um, Mashallah, it works good for now. So Alhamdulillah. I'm so I, I, to I are you are you making them uh, at home and selling them? Yes, actually, uh, no, uh, not at home. We are like I'm making them in a in a place to make them, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, I'm making them and I'm selling them in the big stores. So yes. Beautiful. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, Brother Ishaq, uh, we got to know one another in very strange circumstances. Uh, when yeah. you visited Oman and then the incident that happened, and then uh, we got in touch and uh, we spoke. And subhanAllah, today I think uh, everybody wants to know uh, the reality of what has happened actually and uh, how we got in touch and then the, the new video that went viral again it's not a new video it's an old video but uh, someone the, posted it yeah. again and subhanallah the first time when you posted the video on youtube the people in oman did not see it somehow <laughs> yes because it was in because 2019 I, because i think I don't have a lot of views on YouTube, so it was just my little followers that saw it, and we made a video, you know, for yes. that, and, you know, the problem was fixed, and everything went well, but Allah had a different plan, and he decided to, you know, to, that somebody else take the same video, put it on TikTok, and now it went uh, more than half of a million views, so... Yes. So, but, yeah, so that's what happened again. So it's <laughs> like an uh, old problem that was fixed that, <laughs> but, you know, this, but you know the, it was brand new what's the strange thing about it is uh i didn't just receive uh, the same video from uh, people in oman i actually got it from someone from america <laughs> so oh, this, yeah. this was strange <laughs> yeah that was uh, kind yeah. of strange and i and i so, think uh and i think uh, 
the 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 thing when when it comes to uh, reputation here in Oman, they really love people. They really love to welcome people. So something like this is very shocking. The day that the video went viral, uh, my my phone didn't stop. You know, everybody's asking me, "What are you guys doing in the Grand Mosque? Why are you treating people like that? Why are you chasing people away?" And every time I keep on responding, telling them that this is a very old issue and it was resolved and so on, and we are in good terms with Brother Ishaq. But Subhanallah, the messages just kept on coming. So I think so maybe today, this this show is actually made to solve that problem. Here. Yes. <laughs> so we start with you, Brother Ishaq. You tell us. <coughs> Excuse me. What exactly happened that day? So, 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 I was to start with. I was invited to in Qatar. So I was in Qatar. Uh, I was working with uh, the young, the kid, you know, the young generation, the, and and trying to tell my story from where I came from before I was a Muslim, and that Islam changed me, and now uh, I'm on a straight path, inshallah. So. That's what I was doing in Qatar. But because I left, I stayed there longer, I had to get out from the country and come back in to renew my visa. So um, yes. they sent me to Oman. So mm. I was there in Oman for just like three days and I wanted to visit. So I checked on Google, all the things to visit and for sure the mosque, you know, because I'm Muslim, I want to see the mosque. Yeah. And I yes. was doing like uh, travel vlogs at the same time so that day my plan was to go visit the grand mosque and make a vlog about it and you know just share that with the world and um, when i went to enter the masjid i was not allowed so be, but, but because i was doing the vlog i was already filming yeah so that's what uh. happened. So I was filming. I tried to get in the mask. It didn't work. I, I didn't understand really what he was saying. So that's why I grabbed somebody and I said, can you explain yes. him that I want to go there to pray? And uh, he, he talked with the, the, with the guy and the guy said he refused because I had the tattoo. So for sure at that moment, I was I had mixed uh, emotions, you know, I was mm. sad, you know, and I, I was, I, I was like the first time that I know a lot of people like they talk to me, they said a lot of things because of my tattoos and, mm. and, you know, this was done before I was Muslim and yeah. there's nothing like I could take it, take them off with the laser, but still, you know, it costs a lot of money, makes pain, and maybe yeah. it will not even get out correctly. So yes. that's why I, I leave it like that. And at the same time, you know, uh, when I speak with the young people that are like problem uh, child, and they see me with the tattoos, and it, it, the message goes like better, you know, Allah does things in a way that only he knows like the the, the good thing about it. So so that's why, you know, I have my tattoos from before I went I was Muslim and I just wanted to go pray and that's what happened. So at that moment, you know I, I was I was really sad, you know. But but did, did <laughs> but, you explain yeah. did you actually explain to the guy that you're a Muslim? Even uh, using the, the translator? Did you explain? Uh, no. But I I think no, but mm. you know I was dressed not like a, I don't know, I was Tourist. like a Muslim. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so, but no, I didn't because we had the language barrier. So, yeah. yes. no, maybe he understands something else. I, 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 I don't know what happened, you know, like mm. maybe it wasn't clear or maybe that was what he thought, you know, I, I, I actually don't know. But what was good with YouTube is that because i filmed that video actually uh had him he went to you yes yeah. so, yes so, so so and you contact me and we made a video and you said you in like next time i come to oman you make me a private tour of the masjid and and yes and i shared the video on my youtube channel and the problem was fixed you know like mm -hmm. brothers and 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 it's simple like that it's just that now it got the problem got <laughs> resurfed, like bang back, yes. back to surface yeah. because of 
somebody else sharing the video and got a lot of views. Mm. Now let me tell so, you my side. Let me tell you my side of the story. Yes. Before when I saw your first video, be, I said to myself, before contacting you, let me go and find out what exactly happened. So I went to the head of the security uh, there at yes. the mosque to to talk to them, and I asked them, "Do you have regulations about people who have tattoos?" They said, "No, we don't have regulations, but this is the custom, the practice, that we don't allow people with tattoos." And then I told them, "But this this person is a Muslim, and he came to pray, and during the visiting hours." People who are non-Muslims, they come into the mosque with tattoos as well, and you allow them in. Mm. So this was the confusion because there was yes. no clear instruction to the guards whether they should allow people with tattoos or not. Because during the day, we almost get 4,000 visitors from around the world visiting the Grand Mosque. Mashallah. Yeah. And uh, normally, 4, what happened? 4,000. 4,000. <laughs> And normally what happens, we have a special gate for the visitors. So they can come from yes. 8 till 11. And I think the time you came was after the visiting hours. So I'm not so sure. Uh, did he think that you are a visitor? Or it was just him following the instructions blindly? Mm. Yeah. So, and then I, I, I even addressed uh, the officials uh, at the mosque and told them these type of regulations need to be revised because you're chasing people away. Mm. We have opened the Grand Mosque in the first place to accept visitors and not to chase, yes. to chase them away. So, uh, and 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 uh, I'm sure maybe there are other incidents that happened that we are not aware of. But it's good that exactly. you filmed it. Now at least we're aware that such certain problems might happen so that we can rectify it. Exactly. We are all humans. So, you know, like mis mistakes happen. And uh, the good thing is that, you know, if we can fix things uh, for the future yes. and, um, you know, at the same time, the video went back viral again and it's it's not a good publicity but yes. allah knows best you know at the same time he makes uh, the people like know about that masjid and inshallah we use that uh, visibility inshallah to to turn it positive inshallah do you know the brother who posted the video on tiktok no no idea no it, it uh. just, because i have another account now I'm not more, I'm not really active on all my social media, just on my TikTok and I do it in French and it's mostly for the business. So yes, that, that for the cookies and, and yeah, for the cookies. <laughs> so somebody tagged me and I saw the video and uh, then I, I wrote a message saying that, you know, that that problem was fixed. But uh, yeah. Let me ask you well, about your feeling uh, at that time, right after this incident. How, how was your feeling towards uh, or reaction towards Oman? Did you think about, that's it, I'm not going to come back to this country? Or how, how was it? No, it, it was really, you know, I, I, I can't blame a country because of one guy. Mm. So the incident I remember I was sad and I made yes. another, I made a vlog, I, you know, I made another vlog about that. So I continue my, my, my route, but the people of Oman that, you know, that I experienced it, so I, I met brothers, mashallah, like it was a really good time that I had. So, you know, I met some beautiful people. So it was just sad about that, that masjid and, yeah. And, 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 you know, you asked me if he knew that I was Muslim, but I told him that I wanted to pray. So, mm. yes, you know, I, yeah. I don't know if there's a lot of non-Muslim going to masjid wanted to pray. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely mm. right. Now, the, the most important part now, are you willing to come back to Oman? <laughs> Because yes, everybody is asking that, about you. Many people asking about you. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
coming back to Oman would be a pleasure for me. Like, because and I really love the, I was only there like three days, but I met a lot, kind of a lot of people. I went to travel and I, in those three days were beautiful. Mashallah. I, I, I have good news for you, uh, brother Isha. Okay. During the incident of the TikTok video going viral, someone uh, contacted me and they want uh, okay. to, to sponsor your trip to Oman. Oh, mashallah. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> so you decide when you want to come, inshallah, and we will make okay. all the arrangements. And me and Ali personally will take you for a grand tour at the Grand Mosque. Yeah, but in one condition. You bring the cookies with you. Yes. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, yes, inshallah. No, no, no. Bring the cookies with me. Inshallah. So uh, I think now let us go a little bit back. Not a little bit, a little more back. If you can tell us, I don't know how to, if you want us to do that. If you can talk uh, to us about your upbringing, you know, since your childhood, a little bit story about you. So people know who is Haq uh, Mustaqim. Yes. Yes. But I'm born in a Christian family. Uh, I was not raised by my father. I was raised my, by my stepfather and my mother. And um, when I was a kid, I was a good kid. But after, you know, when you become a teenager, I started hanging with the wrong crowd, you know, and the mm. people taking yes. drugs and making bad things. And with time, you know, I'm going to do it shortly because I have that, that long story. It can take hours, you know. Yes. But uh, what happened is that I became the baddest of the group and I stayed in this, you know? So first thing is always with who you're hanging with. You have to check who you're hanging with. So I was uh, hanging with the wrong crowd. And after that, um, let's say I jumped to uh, 18 years old. At 18 years old, I was uh, uh, accused and found guilty of a, of a crime. And it, they put me like two years in jail. So I did the two years, I went out at 20 and in prison, I learned that, you know, the the cool thing was not really um, like partying and taking drugs and drinking alcohol. It was actually to make money. Mm. So, and they say prison is a school of crime. And for real, in those two years, I, I learned a lot of bad things. So when I got out at 20, I started a new venture of running after the money and I don't know if it was a good thing or it was a curse, but it, I was actually successful doing it. So from 20 to like 29, like I was living a millionaire lifestyle. So I was making a lot of money, dr driving all the big luxurious cars, uh, having a house, uh, living in hotel suites, uh, mm. spending thousands of dollars. Uh, now, but here is Canadian dollars. So, yeah. uh, I'd spend a lot of money to go eat and to, you know, just mm. getting a lot of money and spending a lot of money. And this is what I did uh, in those 10 years. But after acquiring that style of that lifestyle, I wasn't still feeling good inside of me. And I was a Christian. So as a Christian, uh, you don't, I was not really praying, but you know, I was praying when I had problems only. So in mm. prison, you have problems. Yes. I was praying, I was reading the Bible. And when I was reading the Bible, I saw a lot of, um, things that were not really fitting together. Mm. So this opened something in my head. And, um, after that, you know, even the, the, there was a brother, I didn't know it was a brother at that time. He, he brought me the Quran because I was reading the Bible. He brought me the Quran. He said I should uh, wash my hand. He explained me kind of doing the wudu. That, that was so in the prison, huh? I did. That was in the prison. Okay. But that was my first contact with Islam, but I didn't know it was Islam. So I, I started reading the Quran, but it, it was not appealing to me at that time. So I just yes. gave it back to the, to, to the brother. And after that, when I got out, uh, you know, but, uh, at 20, I made that, I made that 10 years of luxury life. I, you know, religion was not there. I was just, you know, the Christian guy, but I got, I got back in prison at, in, at 29 for another sentence of uh, near, nearly one year. And in that sentence, I met another brother mm. and because 
you know, even if you make a lot of money, you always look up to other people. And those people, because when I got, got arrested at that time, I got arrested with, uh, you know, Italian mafia, uh, the bosses. Oh. They, they had a big, a big raid uh, here in Canada, in Montreal, on the uh, bosses, the mafia bosses. So they put them in the prison. And I was with some of, some of them in the same uh, er, like the same wing. Mm. So I was speaking with them and they were telling me that they were not happy with their life and they wanted to change. So that put a little bit more thought in my head, like even them, they're not happy and me, I'm not happy. So I was, I was starting to, to, to think about it. And I, I got moved with that brother and he was eating uh, halal food. And I, I was because I was still not eating pork at that time, you know, as a Christian. But uh, the food, they just take off the pork and they give me salad. And him, he had a good, like he had food from outside. So I said, what is that? He said, it's halal food. I said, what is it? It's, it's for Muslims. So I said, what is Muslim? <laughs> and he started talking to me about Islam. And I was really, you know, I, I, was, I, I was taking the information. But he got released before me. He said he, he, he was going to send me a Quran. I never received it. But, so I, I got released as well after that. And uh, when I got released, later on, um, I met a girl and her mom, you know. The girl, she was a little bit far from the religion, a little bit far from the religion. But her mom, she was practicing and she gave me the Quran. And that's the first time after the time at 19 years old when I read the Quran that's the first time after that I read the Quran and I was surprised to see that in the Quran there's so much stories about the prophet and all those stories that I find in the Bible so I was surprised that it was related I thought Islam was another religion like completely something else and when I read the Quran after that I was I, I, I knew that this was the truth but there was only one thing because as a christian you have like the, there's many type of christian but as a christian before i used to believe that you have to believe that jesus is the son of god and then you go to paradise that's the only thing you have to believe mm. so i had to make a lot of research on the internet about that subject but after that allah guided me and showed me that actually uh you know it it was a misconception of God thinking that God can have a, 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 a child, a son. So uh, we are all like we are all his, his sons, if we can say it like that. So mm -hmm. and after that, um, I re re reverted to Islam. I took Islam and there was, you know, because I was living a criminal life, uh, I had uh, stories that came back for a few years before I went back to court and this time I went back to court I said yes I did it but I changed I'm a Muslim now uh, they even uh, you know uh, brought a Muslim in the, into the court to make sure I, you know ask me question about the religion to make sure I was yes. really a Muslim and after that you know I was supposed to go to prison for four to seven years mm. that was the deal with the judge but Allah made the judge change his mind and he gave me the biggest sentence at home and that was the start of isaac musakim since i was i reverted i got my sentence at home but that was a good thing because my mom was sick sick at the time so i was able to be with her and yeah that was in my uh, <laughs> Inshallah. okay that 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 was in the time uh, of uh, what, criminal time. That was uh, that, I was, that, that I was, was there. I was bro, brother Isaac, years that was, old. I think mm. that was the time when you had hair. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> 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 so uh, and after that, I started, you know, uh, speaking in the masjid and in schools and in university about telling my story and trying to inspire people to go to the straight path so th this is it this is my think, kind of uh, story in short brother is i think it's good news always to have muslims in prison 
because uh, <laughs> you hear a lot of these stories, people reverting in prison where a Muslim is yes. there and they, they give them a Quran. So we're not encouraging more Muslims to go to prison, <laughs> but it's always it's always good to have Muslims in, in the prison. And just so to let, they, ju- they can... Just to let you know, yes. we have interviewed some people, Hatim uh, and I, interviewed some people who had some connections uh, with people in yes. prison, and they actually been into prison, and they tell told yes. the story about people reverting Absolutely. to Islam. Absolutely. Yeah, because before I got that sentence, you know, um, they, I, they, I went to prison for one month until I got the bell, and that was just after I, I reverted. And... For me, that one month in prison was not prison. For me, it was Islamic school. Because when mm. I went there for one month, you know, I reverted. Mm. And just, I think, one or two days after, I, I, I give myself to the police so I can fix my problem. They put me in prison. It took one month for me to have the bail. And in that time, that's where I learned how to pray. That's where I learned my first surah. That's where I learned like a lot about the religion. There was a guy, a brother, he was there from morning to night. Just We were just speaking about Islam all day. We were doing our prayer on time. So I learned so much in that time, you know. And because of the problems, a lot of time people revert to Islam and people in the masjid, they give them kiss, you know, they say mm. welcome. Mm. And, and after that, those persons, they go back home and they're alone. So there's nobody oh, yeah. following them. So for them. me... Allah put me in the prison with that guy to learn Islam, Mashallah. to know how to practice. And the day when I got released, you know, that was an, another the good thing. Because Allah. in prison, you don't eat good feed, uh, good food. Mm. So, so I was there for one month eating not good food. And the day after I got released, it was Ramadan. So mm. in my head, I was like, what? I didn't <laughs> eat good food for one month and now I have to not eat for one month? MashaAllah. You know. I realized that it was another, you know, uh, uh, another good thing that Allah made it like that because in the masjid in the month of Ramadan, you know, the first time I went to the masjid, it was in the month of Ramadan. And that's where the masjid are full. Everybody, you know, the dates, the milk, you know. The, and after that, uh, the, pr- the night prayer, there was a brother coming Mashallah. to pick me up for the night prayer. And, you know, and I, I realized that actually we don't not eat for one month. We actually eat more but just later yeah. so yes you yes. know it was a good thing that I, the first time i met the brothers was in that time in the ramadan time so you know sometimes you a lot of time we think things are bad but you know yeah it happens for a good reason good it's a plan it's a plan made by allah uh, i think uh, brother exactly. brother half of the is asking uh, about your recitation of the quran in arabic i don't know if you want to uh, recite that my recitation uh, is not it's not really good, you know. My recitation is not really if good. If you can give us a few, uh, maybe chapters from Al Fatiha, I don't know, whichever verse that you want. <laughs> you, you, you make me shy now. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, Maliki Yomidin, Yakana Budu, Yakana Stain. Idina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Adina Nam Talehim, Rere Mardubi Alehim, Waratolin. That is, you know, brother, it's ha- mashallah. Really it's beautiful, it's beautiful, mashallah. mashallah. Brother Ishaq, I'm very curious to know why they name Mustaqim. Ah, because uh, I was in the wrong path. So Mustaqim says like the straight path. So yes. Sirat al Mustaqim. So that's yes. why, you know, I don't know. I it's just Allah who, because my name is Isaac. So mm. yes. my it's just I turn it to Ishaq yeah. because it's Arabic, same name. And just yes. Mustaqim because I was on the wrong path and now the straight path, inshallah. So that's why, you know, Ishaq Mustaqim. And nobody Mashallah. had that name. And that's where Isaac Musakim came. So, so that's why now, now what I'm doing, uh, because I'm more on TikTok, and the people now that I'm speaking to is mostly non Muslim. Mm. So I took off, uh, I just kept Stakim for those, for those because I'm, 
I'm still the same person, but I'm speaking to an audience of non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. And here people are really, really, um, you know, there, there was a lot of problems with the religion here before where I live. And the Christianity used to, you know, take control of people's life. And so people here are a bit revolt, revolted mm -hmm. uh, against the religion. But because I, I, I decided to do uh, Dawah in a different way to those people, just to by, you know, showing good manners and, and, and just pushing the, the, the positive. Mm -hmm. Instead of just talking about religion, I wanted to show the religion to the people. So now, alhamdulillah, you know, people there uh, in my audience, actually, they, 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 they know I'm Muslim. They accept that I'm Muslim. They, so it's become more familiar for, for yes. them yeah. about Islam. So they're more open about Islam. So I opened another account just as I said, okay, I'm not going to speak religion on this one, but I opened another account that I speak about religion so people who are interested they can actually switch that other one mm. to learn about Islam so yeah that that's what I'm doing right now Hatim do you yes. allow me to ask brother Ishaq a burning question yeah yeah sure please <laughs> okay let's go ahead It was supposed to nice. be by Hatim, but I don't know if something <laughs> came up in my mind. Now, <laughs> you had that lavish life, life as a millionaire. After reverting yes. back, what happened? Where is all that life? Uh, actually, when I reverted to Islam, um, I, I, you know, I, I was learning Islam and I was really deep in it. And... Some people they owe me money, and I went and I was I changed how I dressed and mm. and I went back to see those people and I said to those people, um, you don't have to pay me back. And actually, the police took a lot of my stuff, but I actually gave a lot of stuff out. So the people who knew me, they thought I was going crazy because that was not normal, mm. you know, doing this, but. And after that, you know, life, um, you know, from a life of making a lot of money to a life that I never really worked for someone. And I just made dua to Allah to find me a job. And I, he helped me really find a job. And I was working at the low, you know, and, and, and even by working full time it was hard for me to, you know, pay my rent and my thing. So it was, it was like the, the, the first years was actually hard. But I say the first years, it been hard for like 10 years <laughs> oh, <laughs> because okay. when you want to change, you know, it doesn't, Happen it different. doesn't goes like that. You know, I've, it's not changing the religion. It's changing everything, changing mm. your friends, changing, you know, the way you get your money, the like it's, it's changing a lot, a lot of things. So it took me, I tried many businesses and not all businesses uh, work. So it's just now, like 10 years after, I, I, I made, you know, I'm, there are some of the business that were successful, but just for a short of time. So now that I find that cookie thing, that cookie business, uh, now I feel kind of relief. And I want, I want actually, to be able to push that, you know, to push that business to make it work really well so I can show the kids. Because what I realized, the other thing is that when I was speaking with the kids at the beginning, you know, some of the kids that were young, but now they went, you know, they become older. And when they become older with the music, with the movies and, and, and all the bad influence, they want they want to run after the after after the money mm. so i try you know i was starting to get the response of the kids like oh you did it before but now you know yes you're in the, wrong, uh, the right path but now you're kind of nobody and they don't want that life so i want mm. to show the kids that actually we can make it l like legally hell hell way in the business and be successful yes. and actually be successful in the Dean as well. So that is my plan kind of, I, I want to regain kind of 
the how can I say not really the luxurious life, but regain the success in the halal business, so I can yes. show the kids that you can do it as exactly. well. And because a lot of people they have misconception, they think, "Are you Muslim? There's not nothing you know uh, fun that you can do. Mm. We can go party and we can do that, but you can't do nothing. No." As yeah. a Muslim, you can have fun, but exactly. doing halal things. Yes, you can be yes. successful, but do right things with your money. Like, so that's that's kind of what I want to do now because the big problem here I see here in Canada, Montreal, but this is all around the world. Like the kids, the young, like the Muslim kids, they going the right wrong direction. A lot of them that yes. It's possible to do it. So this is my kind of my goal because I'm not there yet. Yeah. So I want to do it so I can show them that, yes, you can do it. And actually, a Muslim who has um, money can help even more because when you don't yes. have money, you can have the intent of doing good. You can True. ask Allah, make dua. You know, you can give your time. But if a Muslim has money, you can even help with your money, build, you know, things for the poor or build mosques or there's a lot of things you can do with the money that you can help more so that's that's kind of the the new plan inshallah 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 i think uh, ali we're coming close to uh, maghrib time here in oman yeah so we'll ask uh, brother ishaq one last question before we end today's show yes and the question is a lot of um, the young people in the Middle East and in the Islamic world, they are fascinated with the uh, the lifestyle in, in the West, uh, which is party, yes. you know, uh, the cars, women, alcohol, drugs, and everything else. And you've been there. You've tried everything. Yes. What, what would yes. you want to tell them? You left everything and you came to Islam. So what would you want to advise them? But... But don't go in the wrong direction. Don't go where I left and and go there. But the thing is that the other thing with the business, I'm gonna jump again in the business because when I now I study non-Muslim who are successful in business, and they say things that we have already in Islam. Uh, one of the things they say, okay, wake up before the sun, so you beat the sun every day. We have yes. that in Islam. We wake up for Fajr, you know? Fajr, and yes. Like, uh, like you see the most successful that are non-Muslim. They don't drink alcohol. They don't take drug. They say don't take drug, don't drink alcohol because this will uh, mess up your brain. You're not going to be able to, to, to yes. you know, uh, be fun. successful. Fun function, so yeah. non-Muslim are saying that, and we already have that in Islam. Islam is... It, it, it is like the manual. It is what we have to do. But we put it on the side. We think we're going to follow the, the rap. Let's talk about rappers. Rapper 50 Cent. Who, like, I don't know. 50 Cent is 50 cent. pretty known around the world. And 50 yes. Cent, I read his book. He's not even drinking alcohol. He sells alcohol. Mm. He's not a Muslim. But he's not even drinking alcohol because this is... He, this is, he said, this is not good for him, for his business. So when you really study the most successful, they don't do the things that they sell to you, you know? So us as Muslim, we should just follow the religion. We, we, we will be already one step ahead. So, so this is the end. Our real, real, real success for us is after we die. And this is what we forget. Uh, a lot is that success, the real success is paradise and to go to paradise, a lot of work to do. And, uh, you know, if you want to go party, drink, uh, dr like if you want to go to America and think that's the good life, it is not the good life. You know, <laughs> you go party and then you have a headache the next day and you don't, you don't, you can't wake up from, to go to work. And that, that's, that's not a good life. It's not fun. Yes. Jazakallah khair, brother Ishaq Mustaqim, all the way from Canada. And hopefully, inshallah, me and Ali will be the first people you see at the airport inshallah. in Muscat. Inshallah. 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 So we will keep in touch, inshallah, whenever you decide uh, to come to Oman, we will coordinate and uh, come and pick you up from the airport, inshallah. 
inshallah. But like I said, now I, I'm working a lot, but you know, um, Ramadan is a day, you know, I'm working a thousand, you know, thousand percent in my business. But yes. Ramadan is a day that you should switch and do a thousand percent into the deen. Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to take that month off and and leave. So probably, inshallah, if the plan goes right, I will go to Morocco uh, to 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 meet my wife who's there. Mm. And after yes. that, in that time, inshallah, if we can, we could come to Oman, inshallah. You're most welcome. You're in most welcome, Ramadan, inshallah. inshallah. This is, this is inshallah. your second country. You can come at any time. And no one is going to stop you, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> can't inshallah, wait, can't, inshallah. Can't wait to actually, you know, uh, make that tour of the mosque, make a good video, and show the world how beautiful is the mosque, how beautiful are the people in Oman. And, you know, that was something that happened. But I, I thought about it, you know, a lot of times, like I said, again, we think bad thing, it's, you know, actually good, you know. Mm. So I think this, we can take that situation and, you know, show to the world, you know, because all many people, I, I, I love them. I, I, I had a, so much a good experience in Oman. And, you know, that was a, a, a small mistake that happened. And Alhamdulillah, there was YouTube, so we can fix this. And... Inshallah, they will put a uh, light on that masjid and on the people so people can know that this is a, you know, a good country, good people and beautiful masjid, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, jazakallah khair. Take care of yourself and we love you for the sake of Allah. I love you back, love you back. I love you, Fila, mashallah. Jazakallah khair, jazakallah khair. Take care, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. What a wonderful session. What so I think uh, once we post this uh, video, nobody should call us. The matter is resolved. Maybe they, will, think, maybe uh, they will still call uh, you to thank you. For <laughs> uh, no, no, please don't call me. And don't send me texts <laughs> about this issue. This issue is already it's closed. Already... You heard it from the man himself. So... Let's hope that, inshallah, we can have him in uh, Ramadan inshallah. to come and visit Oman, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. And uh, I think, th I really insist that please share this video because I think the world has to know, you know, what happened and how things have been resolved. So please like and share. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the indication button so you get all the notifications from Ummati Station. Jazakallah. Take care of yourself, brother. Hatim. And Take all care, our Ali. followers. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you very much for Shukran. being there. Shukran, Jazakallah khair, Haikou Salaam.